like him. biggest thing that it's impacted on their lives is how much they have grown in their faith and their understanding of God and their intimacy with Him. The light as you go along, living with one foot in heaven, breaking the enemy's power. In the strength of Jesus we can stand in the darkest hour, living with one foot in heaven, ready when He calls our name. For believers to live Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today, our guests are Jay and Beth Lakin. They are the authors of Passion to Action, and they have really taken their passion and put it into action. Why don't you tell our, our viewers what you've done? Okay, you want to start? <laughs> sure. Uh, we, uh, uh, we went on a missions trip to Africa uh, in the summer of 2007, and uh, I had been overseas before, and uh, had made a big impact on my life and really wanted our family to experience it. And so Beth and I got together and decided, well, let's take a family missions trip. So we led the first family missions trip that North Point Community Church had done, the church here in Atlanta, um, had done to Africa. And it just made such a profound impact on our lives. Um, it's one thing to you know see an image in a newspaper or a magazine or to see the images on a television but when you see it firsthand and get to interact with the people it makes it makes all the difference in the world and one of the guys that I met who had a lot in common with his name was uh, Sammy and he talked to me and told me he said if I just had enough money for a cow I could feed the whole village and so that really and, and got to know him got to go into his his hut and you know, he was so proud of everything, and yet it, there was so much poverty. It made such a huge impact on us. But what really affected us was the fact that the people, uh, it was their sense of joy and community. And we realized that we were lacking something. And we came back home to our, you know, our big house. Remember, like it was yesterday, we just laid on the floor, and we just wept. And we wept not so much at what we had in comparison to them, but we realized how poor we were in comparison. We lacked the joy and community that they had, and so we... You know, we had talked about, Beth and I had a dream um, since we were first married, and our country host, Paul Lundy, talked about having a dream. And his dream is that one day he'd be the president of Kenya. He grew up in the slums, and so we began to interact, like, well, what is our dream? We both knew what it was, but we left it kind of buried. And so we began to pray and just seek God and say, what is it that you want to do with our lives? You know, it, the way that we're living is not fulfilling. And so we decided through a lot of prayer and talking together as a family that we would sell our house, buy an RV, and travel the country with the express purpose of serving people and, and really putting our faith in action. And how long ago was that? That was April 18th of 2008. So it's been about three years and three months that we've been living in the RV full time, traveling the country. And how old were your children when you made that decision? Well, um, Ben was 13, because he is 16 now, going to be 17, and our other daughter, our next daughter is 14, so she was about 11, and then we have a 12-year-old now, and she was 9, and Noah, um, our youngest, is 8, so he must have been about 5. <laughs> it's yeah, hard to five. Yeah, yeah. He's 5. And how has it impacted their lives? Mm, tremendously. Um, I would say the biggest thing that it's impacted on their lives is how much they have grown in their faith and their understanding of God and their intimacy with Him. I think they've really seen how our family has stepped out in faith and God's just been right there and He's met our needs. He's just done incredible things in our lives and through us and you know just with the people we've met and so I think it's really increased their faith and also it's increased their just their ability to go out and, and, and adapt and meet people and and be flexible because of the RV and the size of it and the, the complications with that. They've just grown a lot in their character because of that. And, um, and just seeing some of the things we've seen. We've served in some incredibly rough areas. And um, boy, that's life lessons right there. Yes, what not to be. do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially for our, right, it's been a very impactful for our oldest son who's 16 so he's, mm -hmm. he's learned a lot okay and has it made you closer as a family oh 
we, yeah. we definitely are physically closer. Yeah. And, 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 and definitely, it has brought us together as a family. Just you, you cannot hide when you have an issue, when, you have a, when you're having an argument or a discussion. Um, you can't just run up to your room and be far away from the person. You have to work it out. Mm -hmm. And so we really have, you know, just being physically close and, you know, serving together, I think it's really bonded us together as a family more so than we were when we were living in Atlanta. Well, how do you decide where you're going to go and who you're going to serve? In the beginning, it was, it was very organic. Uh, we just would go wherever we felt like God was showing us to, to go. And, and we had done this study called Experiencing God. Uh, and it was very impactful to us where, you know, God's working all around us. We just simply want to join him in that work. And so that's kind of what we wanted to implement in our journey. And so we would be a week here, two weeks there, a month here. And it was starting to take a toll on us. So we kind of changed our strategy to where we would go and stay in an area for a couple months at a time. And um, what happened is we ended up getting a lot of opportunities. We were in Ladies Home Journal, and then we ended up on Good Morning America, and we got a lot of invitations for people to say, hey, come share at our church. And, and then it, obviously all these things turned into a nonprofit uh, where now we go and help mobilize people to put their faith in action. We've written a small group study uh, that's really to help empower people to find their passion and then put that into action to serve others. So it's a little bit more scheduled now than it was in the beginning, um, but now we're kind of in the mode where we want to get back to inspiring and, and serving, and um, we'll kind of be in a few more areas than we were uh, before. So. That's good. Yeah. Now, obviously, the children had to be educated <laughs> right. during this right. time with all right. these moves. Yeah. And that's definitely so, her department. That's her department. <laughs> I'm not going to. So you all homeschool. We do. And I homeschooled before, mm -hmm. so it was an easier transition for them uh -huh. than having to be pulled out of schools. But it, it was still difficult leaving their friends and their community. But um, but yes, we just continued homeschooling, so that was that was easier. But I never thought I'd homeschool high school. I thought I would be done. I thought my limit is, you know, just right before that, just want to cut it off and be able to send them off to high school. And, and, um, but you know, it's just been amazing. I'm so glad I'm still homeschooling them. So it's did you find, as I did, that high school was actually the most rewarding oh, time to homeschool? Yes, and not as complicated as I thought. I think no. the younger years, you're, you're teaching and you're more hands-on. And if you've, if you've taught them well, they're independent enough where I, you know, I grade their work and I facilitate some, but they're really off and running. If we have a great curriculum, so they're able to be fairly independent. So it is, it's very rewarding. Yes, very and, rewarding. and I found that with my daughter, I was able to start interacting with her more on an adult level during the high yes. school years. Yes. So it was really That's fun. That's strange, yeah, yeah, it is. It's really, it's really fun. fun. Do you miss the life that you had before? Hmm. I think parts of it, there uh -huh. are parts of it. Recently, we had to have a lot of work done on our RV, so we had to move out temporarily and live in someone's home. They were, mm -hmm. their parents were gone, so they had a, a house that was vacant. And so there were definitely times we thought, oh, everybody's got their bedroom. They can sleep in if they need to. They can get away and read. There's just, you know, certain little elements that are, are you know, just wonderful to have, like a dishwasher, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So there's definitely things like that, that that we miss. But I would say as a whole, do we miss living in a home? No, I don't think we would trade what we have right now for that. Eventually, we want to be able to have a ministry center where we um, where we bring leaders and people in from around the country and teach them the the tools that are in our study um, but but then I still keep the RV to be, be able to go out because it's just in our blood now <laughs> now we can't we can't just go back to a normal life that's kind of hard well one of the things I mean it, it's almost like military people Hmm. We're on steroids, though. <laughs> <laughs> we well, just say two I mean, years at a flight stand. We say two but, months. But I, mean, I mean, because, like, the children, that, do they make connections where, where you stay yeah, for do. a month or two mm -hmm. and then they have to leave them? Is that hard on them? Oh, yeah, definitely. I would say that um, the blessings are that they've even met those children because they yes. would have never met them. And That's they remember true. that at all, that, that all the time. They say, oh, I would have never met so-and-so had we not been traveling. Mm -hmm. But then the goodbyes are, are painful. And thankfully, in this day and age with Facebook and Twitter, and there's so many ways to keep up with your friends, but still, they're not face-to-face -face yeah. with all their friends. But then we're in a new area, and they're making new friends. So it's, it's an ebb and flow where it's, you know, sadness and joy and, you know, all of that all kind of And then if we're believers, there's always that's that hope right. of the future hope. seeing them in heaven. 
Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's cool. Yeah. Um, well, tell us about your book and where people can get it sure. and, and why they would want to read it. Um, our book is just our story, our journey that started in Africa, and then it tells our backstory, um, my childhood and the difficulties I faced growing up. I had some um, um, different types of abuse, and, and my mother committed suicide when I was young, yes. and, and so there were, there were several things that um, played out in my life that were very horrible and tragic that I brought into our marriage. And so we do tell some of that, and then, um, and then it tells our journey on the road and the people we've met. And we have some challenges intertwined in there, and there's the kids have little parts where they, you know, give their little two cents on what they think of being on the road. And um, so it's, it, it's basically our journey, and it's available. Um, it's on Amazon. It's on our website. It'll be available September 1st. So in Christian bookstores. Yes, mm -hmm. all over. And we've got a, okay. our, we'll have a book website, which will be passiontoactionbook.com. Passiontoactionbook.com. That's the book. Okay. And our website is passiontoaction.org. Org. And it's okay. passion to T O action. Okay. The number two. Right. We have to clarify because P two A when we shorten it, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's a two I see. in there. That's, <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. Well, is there anything else that you would like to leave with our listeners um, in the way of parental advice or like raising your children in the faith or something that you have know, some words of wisdom that you would want to give them based on what you've learned. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the greatest thing we've learned is just um, the impact that serving as a family has. Mm -hmm. And I think um, some people maybe get afraid of that, to bring their children into unsafe areas or um, to expose them to what they may feel would be harmful situations. Um, but it, it's had the greatest impact on our family and other families that we've inspired to do this. Um, and we've really seen what First John 3 says about not loving with... Um, word or you know with but with actions and in truth yes. that really to display your love with actions and you know because we know that faith without um deed is, is, that is, is dead. Dead. Yeah, right. yeah exactly and so we really feel that this message of um of just getting outside of yourself and getting outside of of your circle of you know the circle that we run in continuously getting outside of that but doing it with your family and with your children and it has a huge impact in their lives and then within your home and, and how they treat one another and serve one another. So. We really believe that um, just as God is in perfect relationship with himself, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, that when a family who's unified and loves each other and it starts there in the home, then it overflows to other people, that really has a huge impact and it reflects the relationship that God has with himself. We've heard that oftentimes we're like, wow, oh, to have your family and see the love that you show it. So they see that, plus they see us coming together to serve. And I think other people, by doing that, can really make a huge impact in their communities by just serving together as a family. Okay. Well, I really appreciate your taking the time to to come and visit us and do an interview for Heritage of Truth. Oh, it's been a pleasure. I just pray that God will bless your ministry. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you so much. Thank you for it's been great us. to be here. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. God bless you. You too. Yeah.